Welcome. This is what is happening on the sun today, the 30th of July 2011. We almost had an X flare. So today's trivia question is going to be about flare classifications. If a B1 flare is 10 times larger than an A1 flare, and a C1 flare is 10 times larger than a B1 flare, and an M1 flare is 10 times larger than a C1 flare, and an X1 flare is 10 times larger than an M1 flare, What's a flare that's 10 times larger than an X1 flare called? The answer, as always, will be given at the end. From the ghost plot we can see that since we last time we met we've had four more C flares and of course this M flare. This was an M9.3 flare, although it doesn't look like it from this plot, but this is the five minute average plot. If you look at the higher time resolution data it goes all the way up to the 9.3. So if it had only just been 7% brighter then we would have had our first X flare since March. But the other thing to notice here is that the background is decreasing. So it seems that some of these regions are simplifying or at least becoming less active. Somewhat surprisingly we only have three numbered regions on the disk at the moment. Region 1264 died away overnight as did its two companions that weren't numbered either. 1260 is stable. 1261 has changed its shape quite significantly overnight and that was the origin of the uh, M flare. And 1263 is a very large region with two huge spots but seems to be stable. There is a new region propping up to the west of 1260 and that's been growing quite rapidly. I think it's the re-emergence of those small spots that I was talking about a couple of days ago. So that is an area worth keeping an eye on. In the Sunspot movie from HMI of course I would like you to keep an eye on region 1261. Look how it changes shape over the 48 hours, starting out as a relatively linear region and then ending up as a horseshoe. However, if we look at the region in detail, we can see a very rare phenomenon, a white light flare. Keep your eye on the spot above the green line and you'll see a flash at about the time of the flare. That's a white light flare. It's very much the sort of thing that Carrington saw in 1859 when he saw the first flare, although this one was much smaller, of course. In the magnetic movie, probably the most interesting thing is the development of these three regions with respect to one another. Turning now to the solar atmosphere, let's take a look at the transition region movie. And here, although the X flare is interesting, I would like you to keep an eye on the two prominences on the west limb, one in the north and one in the south. They look as though they're about ready to lift off, so we should keep an eye on those over the next 24 hours and see if they do. Here's a detailed movie of the M flare seen in helium 2304. You can see there's a small eruption just to the south and west of the region just before the flare. However, the f when the flare brightens, there doesn't seem to be any major eruption within the event. So once again, we shouldn't be expecting to see a major coronal mass ejection from this event. Compare the earlier transition region movie with that of the low temperature coronal movie. Remember yesterday we were comparing the three regions? Now, if you'd said that region 1261 was the most active, then indeed we might have had some harbinger of this flare, but I don't think that was the case. However, we did point out yesterday that region 1261 was increasing in its level of activity, though I don't think any of us predicted an X flare or even a large M flare coming out of this region. The larger region behind it, 1263, is probably the better candidate for that. However, that is stable and is not producing any flares. In the 2 million degree coronal movie, you can see that there's a new region coming over the southeast limb. Following that, I have a movie in an even higher temperature coronal line of the flare itself. Here you can see an artifact of the way in which these images are produced in using multi-layer optics. When they saturate or you get something very bright, you get multiple images forming further and further away from the original source. However, that does show what the shape of the original flare was. That little tadpole is the actual the flare kernel itself. And as we surmised earlier, we don't see a coronal mass ejection at the time of this event. However, there is a beautiful one just at the beginning of this series off the southwest limb. The density, temperature and velocity of the solar wind all seem to be on the increase, however how long that will go on for is not known. These changes are probably associated with the coronal hole in the northwest. The high energy electron flux over the last 24 hours seems to have declined, 
and we've still not seen any evidence of any protons coming from any of these flares. The auroral zones still seem very quiet and the KP index has been varying between 0 and 2. So in summary then, the X-ray background has fallen to the B3 level, the sunspot number has increased to 88, the radio sun intensity has increased to 110 solar flux units, solar wind speed has increased to 410 kilometers per second with a density of 4 protons per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions remain quiet. So my forecast then for the next 24 hours is you have a good chance of getting both C and M flares and uh, there's a possibility of getting X flares. We were so close and the best way of predicting an X flare is that we've only just had one. The sunspot number will remain high. The chance of getting a coronal mass ejection remains good. Solar wind speed will go higher and the chance of getting a geomagnetic storm is very remote. In the slightly longer term there's nothing due over the east limb for at least two or three days, but the region that is due back in the northern hemisphere looks quite bright, so that might be promising. So if you want to find out more about what's going on in the sun, follow some of the links in the description box below. If you want to see earlier editions of the sun today, go to my channel, they're all listed there. The answer to the trivia question of what is a flare that's ten times larger than an X1 called, is called an X10. There is no letter designation for a flare brighter than an X flare. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.